7.3a, Linear Equations. Any equation that has an ordered pair for solutions that we can plot as a straight line on a coordinate plane is a linear equation. When the values for x and y are plotted and they create a straight line, it's a linear equation. So here's the rules, okay? The variables have to be first powers only, so it can only have exponents of 1. There's no products of variables, so you can't have like an x and a y next to each other because that's multiplication, isn't it? And you can't have a variable as a denominator, okay? All right, so let's take a look at these rules. On the left, we have linear equations, and on the right column, we have nonlinear equations. So y equals 3x plus 1 is a linear equation. But if we stick an exponent on that x, nope, because that's products of variables, isn't it? That would be, when we have an x squared, that means x times x. That's the product of variables. We can't have that, so that's nonlinear. If we have y minus 2x equals 6, we got the two variables here. That's linear. But if we put an exponent up there, that means x times x times x, doesn't it? That's a product of variables. x plus y equals 8 is okay. That's linear. But x squared plus y squared equals 8 is not because those are products of variables. The power can only be a 1. It can't be a 2 or a 3 or bigger, okay? And it can't be a negative either. And if we have 5y equals x, that's linear. But if we have y next to x, like xy equals 6, nope, because those are products of variables. If we have 9x minus 15y equals 7, that's linear. That's okay. But if we have an x down here as a denominator, nope, that's not linear, okay? So remember, when you've got an exponent of two or more, or even a negative exponent, that's a product of variables. And when the variables are next to each other, that means you multiply them, and that's a product of variables, okay? Negative exponents mean fractions, okay? So since two points will make a line when connected, we only need to plot two points from ordered pairs to graph a linear equation. You find the x and y value of the first point, the first solution, and you get an x and y value for a second solution. So if you had a function table, you would only need really just two x and two values for y. But it's very smart to use a third point to make sure we graphed it correctly. That way, if it goes through the three lines, you know you didn't make a mistake. So you make a function table with three values for x and three values for y that make the equation true. All right? So let's take a look at y equals 2x plus 1. Well, if x is 0, then 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 1, that would make the y value a 1. So we have a 0 and a 1. If x is a 1, then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1, then y is a 3. And if x is a 2, then we got 2 times 4 plus 1, that makes y's value a 5. So now we got three ordered pairs. We've got a 0, 1, that would be right there, 0 on the x, 1 on the y, and then 1 for x and 3 for y would be right there, and then 2 for x and 5 for y would be right there. So we've got our three solutions to make our line, and now we'll be sure we solved for x and y, now we plotted the points, now we just need to draw a line through the points. So we get a ruler, we draw a line straight through it, and every single point on this line, whether it's an intersection or even in the middle, even some weird spot like right here is a solution if we figure out what that spot's actual coordinates are, okay? Now take a look at this. This is a little fun for you, okay? Get a break from math without taking a break from math. This is string art. And it's actually made out of ordered pairs. And this is what it looks like. It was almost complete. I could have kept going around and made a nice little oval or eye shape that was inside of here. And it would have made a circle if I did an entirely square paper. But because it was rectangular shape, it kind of put this curve right here, this, this vertex right here. See? And it's really easy to make. And you can do it in all different colors. And it's kind of fun. What you do is... You start at 1 and go all the way up to the top one with your first line. Then you go to 2 and 7. See? Here's the ordered pairs. Then you go from 3 on the x to 6 on the y. 
Then you go from four on the X to five on the Y and you just keep moving it and moving it and you can make this nice curve. See, isn't that kind of cool? So you can do that for some fun, make a little art project. And there's actually um, an art kit that you can get called Spirograph. I may have had that around for years. I got one for Emma. And you can make all kinds of neat things. And I even made these from the Spirograph. Look at these. Aren't these kind of cool? It's got plastic uh, shapes that you stick your pen in and you go around and around and around and it keeps making all these different designs. Kind of neat. And uh, that'll give you a break from math, right? So we're going to move on to graphing using intercepts in our next video, 7.3b. And of course, in this Algebra 1 playlist, if you want to go back to graphing equations or equations with two variables and their solutions or plotting points of the quadrants of a plane, those links will be in this description. Okay? All right. So I'll see you next video. Keep your chin up. We can do this. Bye.